it just wouldn't be the holidays without an uncle filled with rage. Keep Uncle Alan away from the eggnog! How long will we have to wait for a Tron sequel? Hopefully not nearly as long as last time. Should we quit exploring Mars and start looking at an asteroid instead? It's not nearly as sexy sounding, is it? All that plus Joss Whedon reveals the origin of one of the best lines in Avengers this year. Kurt stops by for some trivia and we've got a con report. Today's installment of Slice is decked with Holly and Jolly. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Slice of Sci-Fi.com Hey, welcome everyone to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael R. Menengay. I am Brian Brown. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm Megan Zier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ben Raginton. And I'm Keith Lane. All yeah. right, that's it. There it is. So, so what'd you screw up, Megan? This I, time, I had oh. everything. Yeah. I had the wrong cut on, so everybody's uh, moving really slowly uh, through the thing. I'm sorry. I'll uh, just change it right now and I'll move fast. See? All right. Fast. Okay. Well, you, there we go. you know, what make it better. News. News. Yes. Your news team is next. Oh, and we always love space news, so that's what we'll lead off with. Uh, while NASA's Dawn probe finishes its orbit of the Vesta asteroid in September, scientists are still pouring over the wealth of images and data sent back to Earth, making some fascinating discoveries. Yes, this was awesome yeah, stuff. One of the discoveries is the possibility that liquid water once flowed across the surface of the asteroid. Pretty cool. Now, scientists say they have discovered features on Vesta that look as though they could possibly have been cut from such a fluid, such as liquid water. The scientists say that this is an extraordinary discovery because uh, any free water on the surface of Vesta would ordinarily boil rapidly and vaporize because the asteroid has, has no atmosphere, basically, exactly. is what it boils down to. Ah, uh, boils down to yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aren't you clever? So the scientists discovered uh, what are called type B uh, gullies running down the walls of some craters on the surface of Vesta. The scientists now say that the possibility of liquid erosion on the surface of the asteroid requires more research, of course. Now, researchers say that at this point, they are not suggesting the asteroid once had liquid water and are still looking for input from the community on what could have possibly caused this feature. Because it right. could have been something else, they think. Uh, NASA researchers say that during the months uh, Dawn spent orbiting Vesta, it was able to map almost the entire surface from an altitude of 210 kilometers. Mm. Wow. That's impressive. Uh, the high-resolution images have allowed NASA researchers to pick out detailed surface features. Uh, scientist Jennifer Scully from the University... I like that. That's a Scully. great name for a scientist. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. From the University of California, Los Angeles, says that the majority of the cases, the researchers were able to determine that the gullies were likely caused by loose rocks or soil falling down the crater slopes. However, in a smaller group, the pattern of gullies are different and interlaced. Right. Mm. That's why they say liquid of some sort. Of some sort. It, and that's the thing is they're not sure. They're, they're, they're trying to stay off the, the liquid water thing. Everybody's yeah. kind of jumping on that. Yeah. But it could be something else. It could be liquid uh, nitrogen. It could be uh, uh, hydrogen of some sort. It could be it could be anything because it is it is in the middle of cold of space. So things get really freaky when it gets out. I put my cold, nomination so. for mercury. Mercury. Mm. Liquid mercury. More, there you go. More likely helium because it's the, it's well, the coldest. Well, we got to go there then. That'll, the coldest. that'll fill the coldest, lot, really? That'll okay. fill yeah. thermometers for decades. It'll helium and then we could sit there and breathe it? <laughs> in block. We make helium light ice cubes. Exactly. But, mac, but, mac. but wouldn't it be but solid? But in space, or? nobody can hear you sound squeaky. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right. We all know Alan Moore has never been thrilled about his famous comic book works being adapted for the silver screen. <laughs> Understatement. Yes. But could a stage version of one of his famous works please him? No. <laughs> not likely. Probably not. No. No. There'll be more interesting rage coming out, I think, yeah. We'll find out early in 2013 whether V for Vendetta comes to the stage <laughs> oh, dear, as Manchester's Midwinter Last Fest. Set to debut in January, performances will run January 8th through 10th and 27th. If ever if ever a book was ever destined to be a musical, that would be well, it, though. it would rock. Yeah. And I thought Spider-Man uh, It was might a not be idea. a musical. It's it just be a said stage play. play. A, pl- a yeah. stage play. So it needs to be a musical. That 
that would yeah. that would that would make it even better. I mean, it, it needs to be an anyway. opera. Let's leave. Be there oh, an oh, opera. It needs yeah. to be an opera. That's it. It needs to gonna, be an opera. If you're gonna put music there, that's the way you gotta go. That's In right. like German or something really dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> um, Uncle Alan won't be the only one seeing his works come to the stage next year. We've also heard that Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth is being readied for the theater that as well. That would be awesome as wow. a play. Cool. Cool. That well, might be pretty. That could be good. Pretty cool. pair it with Cirque du Soleil, and that would be just. I mean, wow! What Ooh. a what a what an evening! <laughs> Holy crap! That's Mike. a good idea. That's Mike. a great mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. Think about it. I yeah. mean, it'd be amazing. And you know what? You're not going to see a penny of it now. No, I know. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's, that's so. Sucks. Uh, should we take a quick break, maybe, and then come back with some more stuff? I think so. Okay. Why not? Dear Kit, these really obnoxious camels showed up yesterday and tried to make off with our Christmas tree, I swear to God. We had a real tree about a foot and a half tall that another one of my mate's parents sent and it's gone. These camels came into our net and started eating socks and cardboard and all sorts of shit. So anyway, this one camel steps up and chomps down onto our Christmas tree, candy canes and all. It starts to drag it away, so we're pissed off now, right? We chase this dirty camel out of the net and he just doesn't drop it. He's really set on making our tree breakfast. So we start growling at him and he drops the tree. Then another guy gets some popcorn and leads all the camels down to the guys at the next tank over. Not your run-of-the-mill Christmas morning. I hope yours was less eventful. I love you, Brett. And now the news. And speaking of angry uncles, uh, we're going to talk about Uncle Harlan. Yay! Harlan Ellison and comic book artist Paul Chadwick are teaming up for a new hard sci-fi comic from DC. And it's called Harlan Ellison's Seven Against Chaos. Ooh. Sounds interesting. A graphic novel is set to hit stores next summer. Uh, and this is the, the blurb on it. In a distant future, Earth is in grave danger. The fabric of reality itself is unraveling, leading to catastrophic natural disasters, displaced souls appearing from bygone eras, and sudden shocking cases of spontaneous combustion. Awesome. Sounds like a great holiday party, doesn't it? It does. Uh, the Sounds only, like an episode of Fringe. Yeah. The only, <laughs> yeah, it really truly does. The only hope for Earth's survival is a force of seven warriors, each with his or her special abilities. But can these alien seven samurai learn to get along in time to find the source of the gathering chaos and save us all of reality? Yeah. I don't know. So DC <laughs> teased, of course, teased that, of course, the press release for the upcoming book. Uh, given that it is Uncle Harlan, uh, this one could be obviously worth looking into. Oh, because yeah, absolutely. He writes some awesome stuff. He's pretty reliable for quality. For quality stuff. So I'll, I'll check and it out. And entertainment purposes when he gets angry. When he gets angry and <laughs> rages. Speaking of rage... One of the best lines in a movie this year was Bruce Banner revealing the way he kept his inner green Goliath from coming out was by staying angry all the time. <laughs> That was a great one. It, yes. was, it, was, it, it was one of many memorable awesome. moments in the Avengers, and writer-director Joss Whedon says the idea came to him while writing the script for the year's biggest hit. He says, I literally had the I'm always angry revelation during production. I had this certain amount of back burner simmer of rage that I was completely aware of, but apparently I wrote it for Bruce Banner, going to myself. I think this is what a guy like this might go through. Interesting. What guy, Joss? I don't know. Some guy. I can't think of anyone in particular or why this is coming to me. Really, Joss? Really? <laughs> <laughs> he has these great conversations with himself. Right? That's pretty awesome, right? I have awesome. to admit. That's what he told EW anyway. Whedon says the inner rage could come from his long career as a writer in Hollywood. <laughs> there are times that he and a lot of other writers feel frustrated when those involved with the production, hmm. I'm quoting, thwarted him by not listening to his reasoning for why a character should react in a certain way or why a situation should play out the way he or she has written a script. We can also report that Whedon already has a script written for Avengers 2. <sighs> Of That's course, awesome. we have to wait quite a while. It won't hit theaters until do, 2015. Do, do, do we detect a little latent Firefly rage there, oh, maybe? Oh, it's I, not is so that, latent. That, I'm sure. I mean, you know, it? hey. I think so. Yeah. Anger boiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anger, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
So Disney won't make fans wait 20 years for a Twan. A Twan. A Twan. A Twan sequel. It's very good for us. According to Deadline, the Ladies and gentlemen, Elmer Fudd is our new slice coming over here. According to Deadline, the House of Mouse has given the green light for a Twan movie. Twan Twee. The script will come from writer Jazz Wigginton and will follow Twan Wagosi. Yeah. <laughs> this is over. Right. I'm going to keep all going. Right. All right, now go. I can't run video if I'm laughing. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay fine, fine. Anyways, the script's going to come after Tron Legacy. Uh, plot details are being kept under wraps. Uh, David DeGilio uh, wrote an earlier draft of the script. Uh, Justin Springer, co producer on Legacy, is producing Tron 3. So wow. hey, at least yeah. it's coming in the works. I mean, it may not be like right away, but. So do we have any idea what the story is going to be? I, I mean, no. that's it. Um, the question is what? You know, well, there have been point. some There have been some teases. If you have the. the the, the the Blu-ray of Tron Legacy. There's a really great bonus feature where the uh, David Warner's character in the first one. Um, oh, uh, I can't remember, d- 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 can't remember his, his name. Just went right out yeah. of my head. Anyway, oh. we know that his son is in Tron Legacy, and apparently they're having a little dialogue. Oh, they have it in the movie. Oh. Actually, they they talk about it that uh, how he's how he's doing something for the company. I can't remember what it is, but yeah, I mean, it's actually there's a, there's a little yeah. bit in the movie itself. There's something in the movie, but there's also a bonus feature where wow, son and father are having a little bit of a conversation, and the and elder the the father kind of sounds a little bit like the old MCP in it. Interesting. Oh. And it's all about uh, the return of Flynn. Ooh. Huh. So there's a lot of talk about where this might go. Okay. Flynn lives. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Flynn lives. Nice. That's right. Tom Hardy broke Batman and took over Gotham City as Bane this summer. For his next acting job, he'll lead an elite group of soldiers in the big screen adaptation of the Splinter Cell video game series. Ubisoft Motion Pictures and New Regency are developing the big screen version of the popular video game franchise. Wow. So they're going to have an Assassin's Creed movie wow. and And they're this. going big because Assassin's Creed got, what's his name, Fassbender. Oh, Fassbender. Oh, yeah. And so I'm they've got Tom for Hardy for Splinter Cell. Like, Dude, awesome. that's, this that's is not Uva Bowl. You know no. what I mean? This is like. <laughs> well, and they, yeah. we just we just saw um, we just saw the Halo Four m- movie come out too. Here, it's it's on Apple TV right now. Oh, yeah? oh the trailer yeah. for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, the script for the film is being written by Eric Warren Singer. We could not be happier to be teaming up with our friends at Ubisoft Motion Pictures on yet another truly iconic <laughs> title. With a movie star like Tom Hardy in place and a gifted writer such as Eric Warren Singer penning the screenplay, we know the fans will not be let down, said New Regency CEO and President Brad Weston. I have high hopes. Mm. Me too. That's Tom actually, Hardy is awesome. Yeah, Tom Hardy is a, is a really decent actor, I mean, to say the least. And the fact that they're getting big names for these movies, mm, put some bucks behind mm. it. I'm pretty excited. Uh, Christmas came early for best-selling urban fantasy author Kevin Hearn. The sixth installment of the Iron Druid, Chron- Iron Druid Chronicles. Yes, I'm having problems tonight, folks. <laughs> um, Trapped hit the New York Times bestseller list, and he's just signed a new deal with publisher Del Rey for six more books. That's a lot of books. Wow. Yeah, Hearn says that means he'll get to finish up the Iron Druid Chronicles with three more books and one short story prequel release, then embark on a new series for the next three books. Okay, for those of you who have not read Hearn yet, the Iron Druid Chronicles began last Last year with Hounded, <coughs> sorry, introduced us to Atticus, the last of the druids on the planet, his faithful dog, who he communicates with telepathically, mm-hmm. Oberon is the dog's name, and his apprentice, Granuel. Great dog <coughs> name, by the way. Well, and here's, I mean, a, here's the thing. I, I want a dog named Oberon. You know, <coughs> just, it's just cool. <laughs> so, basically, if you love the Dresden File novels... You are likely to like the Iron Druid books. Basically, hmm. they basically make. Hey, there you go. Anybody That's a who good likes, ur- yeah, urban fantasy. If you have a friend or a, a loved one who likes it, Christmas gift idea, folks. There, there you go. go. There you go. If you're like Brett and don't like to crack <laughs> the cover of a book, I'm so sorry. I'm just. Gonna, I'm sorry for you right now. Anyway, um, if you're like Brett and don't like to crack the cover of a book, we've got some good news for you. The BBC plans to adapt some of the biggest (laughs) fantasy novels of the past couple of years in the coming year. This is fantastic. Wow. According to reports, the BBC will adapt the Hugo-winning Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norville. I thought it was Norrell. It's Norrell, yeah, actually. Yeah, typo. As a six-part miniseries, it will be adapted and overseen by Doctor Who and Sherlock alumni Toby Haynes. Ooh, that's pretty good. Oh, that's yes. Good. We will also get a television adaptation of J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy in 2014. Okay. No word yet on if this will be a movie or a miniseries, but Rowling is said to be pleased to be working with the BBC to bring her story to life on screen. They do good stuff over there. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's I, pretty I'm cool. very I'm very excited about this just because of the way they treat sci-fi. Yes. I mean, it's, they do a very good job of it. Well, I think yes. I think literature in general, they do really good mm. things mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. it. So, but that's all the news we have. Do we have some uh, trivia? Why, of course we do. Put on your thinking caps, kids, and play along with the gang. Hey, it's trivia time. Well, hello, Slicers. It's Curtin St. George, and it's time to do part Part two two. of Christmas from Michigan's 2012 Christmas Trivia. Awesome. Get ready. Here comes the first clip. Merry Christmas, sir. It certainly is, Lucy. Oh, that's Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. I I recognize him. Okay, that was a bit short and a bit too treacly sweet for my taste. But here's part two. Two of that conversation. Look, I've put up with a lot since I got here. But this... We thought you were the witch. Yes. Yep. Sorry about that, but uh, yep. in my defense, I have been driving one of these <laughs> longer than the witch. I thought there was no Christmas. Christmas in Narnia. No, it is Father Christmas. No. Not for a long time. Yep, yep. Definitely Chronicles of Narnia. Well, that last clip kind of gave it away. That was Anna Popplewell, William Mosley, James Cosmo, and Georgie Henley in The Lion, The Witch, and the Wardrobe from 2005. Here's your next Christmas treat. So what the hell do you think we're dealing with? Actually, I have an idea. Yeah? yeah it's uh, it's going to sound crazy. Could you possibly say that it sounds crazy to me? Um, it's supernatural. supernatural. Yeah. Supernatural. Yeah. Yep. I don't know which one it is, though. Season Okay, four, I bet you know what show that came from, but yeah. here's part yeah. two of that scene anyway. I mean, I'm just saying that there's some version of the anti clause in every culture. Oh. You got Belsnickel, Krampus, Black Peter, whatever you want to call it. There's all sorts of lore. Saying what? Saying back in the day, Santa's brother went rogue, and now he shows up around Christmas time, but instead of bringing presents, he punishes the wicked. By hauling their ass up chimneys? For starters. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your theory, huh? Santa's shady brother? <laughs> That's awesome. I love Dean. He's yeah. so funny. Mm. Okay, that was Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles in an episode of Supernatural. A very supernatural Christmas from 2007. Here's your next present. Hello. Who are you? What are you doing here? You didn't think this was over, did you? I'm the ghost of Christmas present. That's Doctor Who. A ghost. That was the Christmas special from uh, two years ago. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, I wouldn't Good want one. that one. How do I? I've never met him before tonight. I seem to have known him all my life. How? Why? You're the only person who can and let that's that Michael ship Gambon. Oh, it's, oh. it's, it's, the, it's the Scrooge. It's a Christmas Carol. That sounds like Doctor That who. sounds like Amy Pond. Trying to do it nicely. It is. Mm. Yeah. He's changed my past, my whole life. Time can be rewritten. You tell the doctor. Tell him from me. Uh, yeah. People count. Definitely Michael Gambon. Yeah. Wow. Good one. Good catch, Ben. You've just heard Michael Gambon and Karen Gillan in an episode of Doctor Who, A Christmas Carol from 2010. Get ready, here comes our final Christmas present of the day. My Christmas is filled with laughter and joy and this. Oh, I know that one. Uh, And the longer version. Sally. I need your oh. help more than anyone. You certainly I do, Jack. Christmas. I had the most yeah. terrible yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Splendid. No, it was about your Christmas. There was smoke and fire. Yep. That's not my Christmas. Yep. My Christmas is filled with laughter and joy and this. this Sandy my Claus. Sandy Claus Thanks. outfit. Yep, that's mm. it. Those were the voices of Danny Elfman and Catherine O'Hara in The Nightmare Before Christmas from 1993. Brilliant movie. Well, I want to thank time. Christine oh, yeah. from Michigan for this for year's time? Christmas trivia. We've got yes. one more trivia episode for, for the year. Time. But if you have any ideas for trivia for next year, please send them to sliceoftrivia at gmail.com. Awesome. awesome. Very nice job there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to more of those. So we're going to take a quick break and uh, be back right after this. Hey Slicers, it's Brian from Slice of Sci-Fi TV, and I have the coolest new application to show you. It's the Slice of Sci-Fi app. Here's how it works. By selecting the Slice of Sci-Fi application, it brings you to the home page where you can select an episode, ask a frequently asked question, go to the Slice of Sci-Fi website, 
the Slice of Sci-Fi TV website and the Slice of Sci-Fi XM Sirius Satellite site. So you can read, watch, and listen to any of the episodes. Start off by selecting an episode. Jamie, you are now, once you've done that, you can leave video feedback. Hey Slicers, I really loved the last episode. Audio feedback. Hey Slicers, I'm leaving you some feedback for the radio show. Or send us an email. So download the app and share your thoughts because we want to hear from you. This week's Con Report is brought to you by Geek Nation Tours. Find out more at geeknationtours.com. So really, we want to thank Terrace Cassidy and Geek Nation Tours for all their support during 2012. Mm -hmm. And while we're in a holiday gift-giving mood, we thought we'd give you a, a slice of sci-fi sneak peek at some of the fun you can have when you book the next convention plans with Geek Nation Tours. Because they're awesome. Yes, yes Hi indeed. Highlights include February 26th, Emerald Comic Con, April 17th, Adapticon, uh, with special non-geek spouse tour specifically. We've talked Ooh. to Terrace about that before. Uh, June 11th, Lego at Brick World. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, July 2nd, Gettysburg and Battlefield of the Civil War. Oh. Uh, August 3rd, Trek Sites, Hollywood to Vegas with Larry Nemechek, Ooh. our good buddy there. Oh, that's uh, nice. August 13th, Gen Con. August 28th, PAX Prime Tour. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, September 25th, Dual Con. October 8th, Superhero Tour and New York Comic Con. Ooh. October 17th, Essen Spiel Germany and Amsterdam Tour. Essen Spiel, folks, is a giant Huge. board game convention in Germany. Wow. It is amazing. So for all convention locations, dates, and Geek Nation Tour specials, visit www.geeknationtours.com. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Very, very cool. I want to do some of those. I know. Yeah. The, the Brick World right. sounds mm. awesome. Essen the, the Lego. The, if you haven't Essen seen Spiel, the pictures right? of the Lego, Lego convention, it's just phenomenal. I mean, some of the stuff that they build yeah. for that convention is just outrageous. Wow. Well, there you go, folks. There you go. All right. Um, so we're winding down. Mm -hmm. We got a little bit of time. To we talk. do have a little bit of time. So, um, so w I was going to say, why don't we talk a little bit about what we got coming up for the next couple of weeks? Because yes. we're getting into schedule. holidays. Yeah. Our schedule. Our schedule. Uh, yes, our schedule. Our schedule. Um, so we're going to be we're going to be putting out content throughout the whole holiday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not going to be like the last year where we basically gave you like three weeks worth of reruns. Uh, reruns. Yes. Um, um, we ha may have a couple reruns in there, but it's not going to be a lot. Um, yep. In fact, uh, uh, the stuff that is going to be rerun is going to be probably pretty minor. Yeah. Um, we, we're putting a lot of cool content out right now. Yeah, guys. so we're going to do some. Uh, we're do some extra interview stuff. We're also mm -hmm. going to put out, of course, our extra cuts for the video watchers. Mm -hmm. So sorry, audio folks, you kind of lose out on that a little bit. That's us geeking some more. That's mm -hmm. that gives you a good excuse to go download the app or visit us on YouTube. Please watch us on YouTube. Please. There you go. Well, not everybody can do that. I understand that. Right. You know, people are commuting. We don't want you to watch video. While you're driving, no, no, really, it's Port really hard no. to get your laptop, yeah. and, yeah. you know, right. in front of you while you're driving down the way to watch the. YouTube that's why you so. have to buy the uh, the mount. The, the oh, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> come on now, really. <laughs> no, definitely not. We, we at Slice of Sci-Fi sci do, do not, not endorse, endorse this. this. <laughs> <laughs> but if you did, where would you buy that? I cannot no. confirm and nor deny anything of that sort, <laughs> Megan. I'm sorry. <coughs> Amazon.com. Amazon. Uh, Amazon. <laughs> Did you? Well, no, we're not going there. Um, so there's lots. There's lots of content coming your way, folks. Yes. So so don't just abandon this for the holidays. We know we're not abandoning you. And not to mention the fact that uh, next. Uh, let's see. Next Friday will be our big geekathon on movies and TV and everything. Yep. That was we're really gonna, cool. We're gonna in talk about 2012. We're going to talk about all sorts of different things. Yes. Movies. TV books. That's comic why we're books. trying not to talk comic about it right books. now because yeah. go watch it. Go watch that one. You want to watch? Yeah. We want to watch next Friday. Next well, Friday. It'll also go out on on, on audio as well. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. right. And and for post holiday social joy, those of you in the hood in early <laughs> January, we will be having our um, semi annual party. Mm -hmm. Far fest. Far, Far fest. fest. On I believe it falls on January fifth this year. It's yes. the first Saturday in January. Yeah. So Whatever come, the first come, Saturday is. Come by the studio and and hang out with us. Yeah, you get to meet all of us. Uh, we'll feed. You, you know, if you bring something, that's even better. There might even there be, may some, be booze. There may be famous people. You there, never know. There, there's allegedly at least allegedly, one coming. At least one. 
We're famous. So, we're famous. Ish. We? In our no. own minds. In our own in our own <laughs> oh, time. Oh, oh, and while I'm thinking of it, big ups to Tom and Dom for yes. The, um, yes. for creating that app for us. It's awesome and we're very so excited cool. about it. Please go check it out. Yeah, yes. and, and one really quick thing on that is uh, what you don't have to hold your phone upright. Um, please turn, turn it landscape, landscape. Um, because if you look at the videos that are coming in, they're kind of squished. Oh, um, yeah. Videos so, look better landscape when we um, yeah, put them out. Yeah, just turn the phone. Just turn the phone sideways Squish. like a camera and, and, and shoot yourself or whatever. And uh, it's... Important safety tip. Thanks, Mike. Yes. That's it. <laughs> yeah. turn, turn the gun when you shoot yourself. <laughs> sure, that's what it sounds like. Yourself. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> oh, when whoa. you're shooting a video it's, of uh, yourself there you or go. your Something subject. else we don't endorse. Yes, right. yes, 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 yes it, definitely so. not. But, but uh, everyone. shooting yourself or taking video of yourself? <laughs> But well, if you if you yes. watch the uh, if you watch the uh, last uh, um, voicemail or the feedback show, um, you will see some really awesome usage of our app already. Um, Very cool. So it's more than people just uh, you know think what it is. Yeah, picture, yep. pictures of themselves. They're actually showing us some interesting new stuff, and that's yeah. that was the whole point is to get some interesting comments and com- content make, from you folks. Make it easy, right? That's we want right. to make it easy for you yep. to be involved. There we go. Absolutely. Well, we'll be back in just a couple days. Yeah, yeah, we're so. not going anywhere. Nope. Going to be a lot of slicing this uh, this holiday season. We're in for the long haul. Yes, it. <laughs>